Hi everyone, my name is Melissa. In this video, we'll examine an interesting question that was raised on the Enterprise DNA forum about how to dynamically merge a changing number of columns. So this scenario deals with raw data exports that causes data to spill into an unknown number of adjacent columns. When we look at the example, the description has spilled over into column 4 and description 2 has split over into two adjacent columns. But that won't always be the case. In the next cycle, this number of columns could change. Before we jump into the solution, let's examine the M code that Power Query generates when you merge columns. I'll select both the description and pressing down either Shift or Control, select column 4 as well. Now you can right click and choose Merge Columns, or on the Transform tab, select Merge Columns. And this dialog box appears. So you can select the separator, I'll choose Tab, and you can enter a new column name. OK. In the formula bar, we see the M code that this transformation step has created. If the formula bar is not visible on your screen, go to the View tab and toggle it on. So the function Power Query uses to merge column is table.combineColumns. The first parameter it takes is a table. That table is returned by the previous step in our code. So in the Applied Steps pane, you'll see that that is called Source. Then it hard-coded the column names in a list. Here you see the list initializers and between, in text values, the column name Description and the column name Column 4. Then it calls another M function to combine the text values in those columns. And finally, it passes the new column name as a text. So we can adjust that. Press Enter. So if we want this function to dynamically merge a changing number of columns, we'll have to change that second parameter value that now contains a list of hard-coded column names. I'll step back to my raw data query. And if we take a closer look at the column names, we see that each of the spill columns is actually anonymous. They don't have proper names, but all start with the text column followed by a number. Let's see if we can use that. First, I'll create a reference. So I'll right click and select reference. And to get the column names inside the formula bar, I can add table.column names. And this function returns a list with all the column names from that table. Let's turn this back into a table. And on the Add Column tab, I'll select Format, Trim. Now, this isn't a transformation that I want to perform, of course, but it does generate the bulk of the M code for me. All I have to do is replace that Trim function with my own logic. So inside the formula bar, instead of text.trim, we can say if Text dot starts with and then point to our column one. I'll copy that immediately. So control C to copy that. And then it wants that text that we're looking for. So that's going to be column. So if it starts with the text column, then we want a null else we want whatever is in our column 1. We can also rename 
that column, so inside the formula bar, instead of trim, let's call this group column. Perfect. Now all we need to do is fill down these values. So I'll right click my header, select fill down. So the next time data comes in and that number of column has changed, this group column will automatically pick that up. Let's rename this query. So I'll call it column groups. Let's make sure that its load has been disabled because this is just a supporting query. And I can reference this supporting query. So select reference. I'll rename this later. Let's leave that for now. Okay, so if you remember, we started by merging two columns. And that created a hard coded list with the column names. But now we can filter on description in our group column. So if we do that, filter on description. Inside column one, we get the columns that meet that criteria. However, this is a table and not a list. We need to extract whatever remains in that first column because we need to include those columns in our merge operation. So to do that, we can right click our column one header and select drill down. And now we do get a list. So let's give this query a proper name. And let's check if it's disabled from load. Okay, perfect. Now we can step back to our result query and replace that second argument here with our dynamic list. So here we can reference our list description. And press OK. That's looking good. Let's repeat this for description 2 as well. So I'll go to my group columns query. I'll create another reference. Select the columns that I need. So those are description 2. That returns these three columns. I'll right click my header. Select drill down. And I'll rename this query as well. step back to my result query, select description 2 and press down either shift or control to select the next column as well. I'll right click the header and choose merge columns. Again, I'll choose tab and I'll call this description 2. Okay. I'll just the column name again here. Change that hard coded list by the list we've just created. So list a description to press OK. As you can see, this also picked up column eight that we previously excluded. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything, means a lot to us. Thank you so much for watching, all the best.